Good day everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'll be explaining the formalist literary criticism or the use of formalism as a theory in literary criticism. So what is a formalist literary criticism? From the very root word itself, which is form, the focus or the emphasis of the analysis is the form of the text or the, the work of literature. When you say form, it is the, the appearance of the text, how the text or the literary work appears to the reader or to the critique. Form means the text itself. So anything within the text, its elements and components form part of the form. Specifically, the form includes the following. We have the words used in the text, the sentences, the lines, the paragraphs, the verses, the stanza, the structure and patterns of words, sentences, lines, stanzas, paragraphs, and the relationship of these elements or parts to the whole and the whole to the parts. Also, it includes the language, the grammar, the syntax. We have the literary devices. When we speak of literary devices, we refer to figures of speech in the text or used in the text. What else? We have uh, symbols. We have imagery, the plot, the characters. We have the rhyme, the rhythm. Uh, the genre itself, or the, the analysis of genre, the, the cataloging of the text, or the classification of the text into genres. We also include in, in, in the form, as part of the form, the, the, the style, the techniques, the sound, etc. This theory, the formalist theory or formalism, assumes that the text has a life of its own, independent from its author. That is why formalistic uh, critique of literature is basically an internal criticism, meaning the, the focus is the text itself. It does not include anything outside the text, like the author or the, the influence of the author on the text, the historical milieu, the political background, economic background, cultural, spiritual, and all other backgrounds or environment. They have nothing to do with formalist criticism. The formalist criticism originated in, in Russia, and it was a reaction to the criticism of the time, which was based on the moral analysis of the text. That the, the goal of the purpose of the text is to teach or to express virtues or to share moral teachings. Also, at that time in Russia, literature was understood, interpreted, explained, and analyzed using the religious lens or the religious context. So the goal of the early proponents of the theory was to focus on the text as an object. So they believe that the formalist approach or the formalist critique of literature is an objective criticism or a scientific analysis of the text. And it has its own advantage. The advantage of the formalist criticism is that it does not re require a lot of research outside the text. So you don't have to go back to the life of the author. Uh, you don't have to relate it with the works of the other works of the author or the works of the prominent authors of the time or to its milieu or uh, context. So you merely focus on what you see in the text when you read it. So that's the advantage. So it will not consume a lot of time though it really takes time. And my advice to those who will be using this theory, by the way, this uh, theory, formalism, is also known as new criticism or neocriticism. 
It is likewise a reaction to the Marxist theory or the use of Marxism in literary criticism. So Marxism focused on the social uh, context of the text, looking for oppression, looking for class struggle, etc. So formalism is a reaction to that kind of criticism. And and the, the advantage of it is you don't have to use a lot of, of time and a lot of resources to be able to interpret the text. And I would suggest, since there are a lot of things that formalism include, the elements and the components of the text, it would be best for critique for students and readers of literary works to specify what elements or components of the text one has to look into or to analyze or explain or discuss when he or she uses formalism as a theory. For example, if, if one would focus only on the grammar, then that would be it, or on syntax, or one would fo focus on the literary de devices like figures of speech. Others may focus only on the plot or, or the character. Others would focus on the choice of words. So it has to be specified in the introduction or maybe in the method or methodology of one's paper or the critique itself for readers and other critiques and other scholars to, to understand or to have a better understanding of how the, the critique or the analysis is done. Well, you have an option. You can analyze as many elements as you can, but the more elements in the formalist uh, theory or approach you're going to use to analyze the text, that would mean the, the longer the analysis would be, or it will take more time to analyze the, the text or any lit literary work, and the more discussions and explanation is required. So if you can only analyze the, the text or the form using one form or one component of, of the form, then that's okay. That's all right. It's up to the reader or the critic what element to look into or to analyze in the text using the formalist criticism. So thank you for watching and listening. Please click like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel and be updated with the next episode.